Hi, I am Juan Fernando Meister from Indiana University. I'm excited to discuss our paper, Examining Mobility Among People Living with HIV in Rural Areas. Transportation in rural areas in the U.S. has been characterized by limited access to public transportation, as well as private transportation, such as taxi or ride-sharing services like Uber or Lyft. It has also been characterized by a prominent dependency on cars. Human computer interaction research has focused on urban areas primarily in order to design technologies to disclose, advertise, make known the local and available transportation methods and how people could benefit from ride sharing services like Uber. Fewer research has focused on rural areas, especially when it comes to people living with HIV for whom transportation access is critical as it has been linked to successful care and treatment and medication adherence. With the help of an HIV support center located in the study region, we conducted 14 interviews with people living with HIV and four case coordinators. The data collection period took place from March to July of 2020. You can find more details about our approach in our paper. The focus of our research is people living with HIV in rural Indiana. We wanted to look at the transportation methods that they use to get to healthcare appointments, the grocery store, and employment. We also wanted to look at the barriers and facilitators that underlie these transportation methods. Finally, we wanted to understand the role of community-based and healthcare organizations in these forms of travel. The most common form of transportation was driving to get to the different destinations. If they couldn't drive, they would then ask their family members or friends for rides. If they couldn't drive or get rides from family and friends, participants attempted to use public transportation or paratransit transportation. These forms of transportation allow them to call ahead of time to get rides to their healthcare appointments or go to the grocery store. If participants could not use or have access to any of these transportation methods, they relied on their case coordinators for rides to go to their healthcare appointments and in some cases to go to the grocery store. In fact, case coordinators were considered as a last line of defense. If case coordinators could not provide rides to their clients, they could give them vouchers for taxis or ride sharing services like Uber or Lyft. They could also help their clients find and coordinate rides from their own social circles. Private transportation methods like taxi or ride sharing services were not really present in the communities where participants lived. And if they did exist in those areas, especially taxi services, they were often too expensive. In the case of ride sharing services like Uber and Lyft, participants mentioned that they would not use them even if they were available because of their lack of trust in strangers giving them rides. Participants mentioned that they would be interested in trying alternative methods of transportation that other people in their communities are using at the moment, in particular retired people like golf carts. Participants mentioned that people in their communities would use these alternative transportation methods to go to the grocery store, for example. Our findings also suggest the presence of a neighborly altruism amongst participants that have tightly knit social networks. This allowed them to compensate transportation favors via light reciprocity or no payment at all, and ensure confidentiality about their medical condition while getting to their destinations. So the key and common facilitators for the various transportation models used by participants were to own a car, have a support network in place, and when there are no risks of breach of confidentiality regarding their HIV status. The key barriers were lack of infrastructure in rural areas, coordination breakdowns between drivers and riders, lack of knowledge of transportation services in the area, fear of potential enactments of HIV-related stigma, lack of interpersonal trust between riders and drivers, and lack of independence for riders. For more detail about all the facilitators and barriers, please refer to our paper. Based on our findings, we proposed the design of crowdsource-based systems that could deliver contextualized information about the different transportation models available to riders, including potential facilitators and barriers. In addition, we proposed the design of favor-based systems that could integrate reputation to help increase trust amongst riders and drivers. The system could also integrate a time banking-based system to help riders connect to trusted community members who are willing to provide transportation services in exchange for other services. Finally, we proposed the design of telehealth systems that would reduce the need to travel to healthcare appointments. I would like to thank all my co-authors and the NSF for funding this research. Thank you.